Become who you are. Friedrich Nietzsche. To study the Buddha way is to study the self. To study the self is to forget the self. Dogen Zenji. The quest to understand the self is an intellectual and spiritual journey that has been undertaken by philosophers and thinkers from vastly different cultures and times. Among the most interesting thinkers, and two who perhaps best represent the Western and Eastern cultural responses to this question are Friedrich Nietzsche and Dogen Zenji. They best epitomize the two primary approaches to the self. Nietzsche was a 19th century German philosopher. Dogen Zenji was a 13th century Japanese Zen Buddhist monk. Nietzsche's philosophy of the self was one of self-overcoming and the revaluation of values, whereas Dogen's philosophy of the self was one of self-understanding and the realization of the interdependence of all things. In this video, we are going to examine Nietzsche and Dogen's philosophies of the self. We will examine how these two approaches, when combined, can provide a life that is not only deeply contemplative, but also vibrantly creative. We will begin by looking at the concept and realization of the self as being empty. The concept of the emptiness of the self is an area where Nietzsche and Dogen will be seen to intersect. We will see how Dogen's recognition of the empty self as pure potentiality can also paradoxically help us realize Nietzsche's philosophy of self-creation. If you enjoy this discussion and video of the spiritual and philosophical comparison of Friedrich Nietzsche and Dogen Zenji, you may want to visit our online bookstore, Asangoham Books. There you will find curated book lists on spirituality and philosophy. We add books lists every day, so Asangoham Books always has new offerings. You can find the link to Asangoham Books in the description to this video. Nietzsche's concept of self-overcoming represents a radical departure from traditional Western thought. It represents a philosophical reimagining of the self, not as a static, unchanging entity, but as a dynamic, constantly evolving process. This view of the self is a cornerstone of Nietzsche's wider philosophical project. It serves as the gateway to Nietzsche's further critical examinations of morality, truth, and the meaning of existence. Previously in the West, conceptions of the self were grounded on a notion of a stable, enduring identity, which was strongly rooted in religious or metaphysical frameworks. Nietzsche rejected the idea of an immutable human nature. Instead, he said that the self was shaped by an array of forces, cultural, social, psychological, and physiological. Thus, the self is not a given fact, but a creation. It is continually forged and reforged in the crucible of life's experiences and challenges. Central to this process is the concept of self-overcoming, or Selbstüberwindung. This self-overcoming involves a continual process of questioning, challenging, and transcending one's existing values and beliefs. Self-overcoming is not a journey with a final destination, but an ongoing endeavor where the goal is not to find absolute truths, but to engage in a perpetual revaluation and recreation of values. Nietzsche's concepts of becoming who you are and self-overcoming are intricately related and central to his philosophical discourse on personal development and authenticity. Becoming who you are is a process of self-discovery and actualization. In becoming who they are, individuals embrace their inherent potential and unique qualities, unhindered by societal norms or conventional morality. This process is inherently linked to self-overcoming, which is the active, continual effort to challenge and transcend one's existing limitations, beliefs, and values. Becoming who you are isn't a passive realization of a pre-existing identity, but an active creation of oneself through the relentless process of self-overcoming. Becoming who you are and self-overcoming are closely intertwined with Nietzsche's critique of Christianity and his declaration of the death of God. For Nietzsche, the death of God signifies the end of absolute, externally imposed values and truths. 
This vacuum of absolute values necessitates a re-evaluation and creation of new values, a task that falls to the individual. Nietzsche's critique is not just a rejection of Christian morality, but an invitation to create a new moral framework, one that is grounded in the realities of human life and experience, rather than in religious or metaphysical absolutes. The ultimate embodiment of self-overcoming is the Übermensch, or Overman. The Übermensch represents Nietzsche's vision of a future type of human being who has transcended the limitations of conventional morality and beliefs. This figure is not a fixed ideal, but a symbol of the potential for human evolution, an exemplar of what humanity might become through the process of self-overcoming. The Übermensch embodies a new set of values, ones that affirm life, embrace the will to power, and finds meaning in the earthly, the temporal, and the human. Nietzsche's concept of self-overcoming has profound implications for how we understand the self and its place in the world. It challenges us to see ourselves not as finished products, but as works in progress, always capable of growth and transformation. This perspective encourages a form of existential courage, where individuals take responsibility for their own development, crafting their lives and identities through their choices, actions, and the values they create and uphold. Nietzsche's philosophy thus represents a call to embrace the challenge of becoming, to engage actively in the shaping of oneself, and in doing so, to participate in the ongoing evolution of humanity itself. In other words, we are always in the process of growing up, individually and collectively. This concept of growing up is one that we will examine in more detail further in the video. Dogen presents a philosophical and spiritual approach to the self that is deeply embedded in the principles of Zen. Unlike Western conceptions of the self, which focus on individualism and identity, Dogen's perspective is intrinsically linked to the fundamental principles of Buddhism. His teaching is encapsulated in the phrase, to study Buddhism is to study the self, to study the self is to forget the self. This phase provides a profound insight into the nature of self-awareness from a Zen Buddhist viewpoint. This approach is not just a philosophical stance, but a practical path towards enlightenment. Dogen's philosophy revolves around the idea that understanding the self is a journey into the depths of one's own existence. This paradoxically leads to the realization of no self or anatta. For Dogen, the self is not an isolated entity but part of the larger, constantly changing tapestry of existence. This understanding challenges the notion of a fixed, independent self and replaces it with a vision of the self as interdependent and transient. The self is seen not as an autonomous being, but as a nexus of relationships and processes. The process of forgetting the self, as Dogen puts it, is not about negating or annihilating the self, but transcending the ego-centered view of existence. It's about seeing beyond the illusion of a separate, enduring self and recognizing the fluid, impermanent nature of all existence. This shift in perspective brings about a transformation in how one experiences the world. It leads to a state of awakening where the artificial distinction between self and other dissolves. Dogen's path to understanding the self begins with zazen, or seated meditation. This is the primary means by which one cultivates their study of the self. Zazen is not merely a practice of quiet contemplation, but an active engagement in the moment-to-moment -moment reality of existence. Through this practice, one learns to observe the workings of the mind and the transient nature of thoughts and perceptions, leading to a deeper understanding of the self's true nature. In other words, through this practice of Zazen, we begin the process of waking up, we will examine this notion of waking up and its relation to growing up in more detail further in the video. Nietzsche's view on suffering is intricately linked to his concept of self-overcoming and personal growth. He posits that suffering is an essential aspect of human existence, serving as a catalyst for personal development 
and self-transformation. In Nietzsche's philosophy, enduring and overcoming suffering are crucial in the process of becoming the ubermensch or overman. This perspective sees suffering not as something to be avoided, but as something that can be harnessed for personal growth and the development of strength and resilience. In the words of Nietzsche that have become well known and often quoted, what does not kill me makes me stronger. In other words, Nietzsche's attitude to suffering is to embrace and affirm life in all its aspects, including its hardship and pain. Dogen's perspective on suffering is completely the opposite. It is rooted in Buddhist understandings of suffering, that is, that suffering can most definitely be vanquished. Dogen understands suffering as caused and thus can be uncaused. He sees those causes of suffering as attachment, ignorance, and most essentially, the feeling that one is a separate self. Thus, for Dogen, the overcoming and vanquishing of suffering is achieved by the realization of no self, or anatta, and the subsequent realization of interconnectedness of all existence. Dogen does not see suffering as Nietzsche does, that is, as a tool for growth. Rather, he sees suffering as utterly unnecessary. The result of a lack of an understanding as to the true nature of reality. These different interpretations of the meaning of suffering for Nietzsche and Dogen highlight a fundamental and more general difference in cultural understandings of the meaning of human existence. Cultural understandings of the meaning of existence that have been held for thousands of years. Nietzsche's embrace of suffering as a means of empowerment and self-actualization is an existential and individualistic understanding of the meaning of existence. It is a philosophy that encourages individuals to confront and integrate suffering as part of their personal journey towards self-mastery and the creation of a meaningful life. This tends to align with Western values of personal freedom and agency, triumph over adversity, and a culture of winning at all costs. Despite their differing cultural and philosophical backgrounds, Nietzsche and Dogen converge on the idea that the self is not a static, isolated entity. Rather, both see the self as empty of any enduring entity. For Dogen, the notion of an empty self is a direct reflection of the Buddhist concept of sunyata, or emptiness. This understanding does not imply non-existence, but rather the absence of a permanent, unchanging self-nature. In the Zen Buddhist tradition, Realizing this emptiness of self is central to achieving awakening, an awakening that engenders a sense of humility, compassion, and a profound engagement with the present moment. Nietzsche's interpretation of the empty self diverges significantly in its existential context, but arrives at a somewhat parallel conclusion. His view of the self as a dynamic, ever-evolving process implies that it is empty of any inherent, unchanging essence. This emptiness, however, for Nietzsche, is not a source of despair, but a space of potentiality and creation. It allows for the continuous self-overcoming and revaluation of values that Nietzsche advocates, enabling individuals to actively shape their own identity and destiny. For Nietzsche, this leads to a life lived with intensity, creativity, and authenticity a life where one constantly transcends the limitations of conventional morality and societal norms. Can these two life philosophies be combined to form a way of life that is both dynamic and deeply connected? Yes. However, Dogen's teaching and the realization of the emptiness of the self more generally must serve as the prerequisite or prior understanding before Nietzschean self-overcoming and its creative force can be fully embodied. This is because it is only in the recognition of the empty nature of the self that it becomes possible for individuals to free themselves from rigid self-concepts and societal constructs. In other words, the transformative and very worthwhile journey that Nietzsche is suggesting is only possible with the mental and emotional flexibility that one gains from the radical insight into the emptiness of self. Ken Wilber is an American philosopher and writer known for his work in integrating various fields of knowledge and experience, including science and religion, into a comprehensive framework called Integral Theory. 
Wilbur articulates a compelling argument about two fundamental dimensions of human development, waking up and growing up. Waking up refers to spiritual or transcendent experiences, a process often found in Eastern spiritual traditions, which involves realizing a deeper, more unified state of consciousness beyond the ego. In other words, realizing the emptiness of self and world, as in Dogen's teachings. Growing up refers to psychological and emotional development, a concept more aligned with Western psychological understandings, encompassing the evolution of one's cognitive and moral faculties through various stages of life. In other words, overcoming oneself and realizing all of one's creative potentials, as in Nietzsche's philosophy. Wilbur argues that both these dimensions are crucial for holistic human development, yet they are often pursued independently. He suggests that true development requires advancing in both realms concurrently for a more comprehensive and balanced growth. One of the major challenges in the Nietzschean path of self-overcoming is the attachment to fixed identities and beliefs. Dogen's teaching of emptiness addresses this by revealing that these identities and beliefs are not only impermanent, but also interdependent. This realization cultivates an openness and fluidity in one's perception of self and the world, making it easier to embrace Nietzsche's idea of constant evolution and revaluation of values. Dogen's emphasis on interconnectedness engenders a sense of empathy and compassion. Understanding the emptiness of the self deepens one's appreciation for the interconnected nature of all beings, fostering a compassionate approach to life. This compassion is crucial when engaging in Nietzschean self-overcoming, as it ensures that the pursuit of personal growth and creativity is not at the expense of others, but is harmonized with the well-being of all. Suffering. Nietzsche's philosophy encourages embracing life's challenges as opportunities for growth. However, this can be daunting and may lead to increased suffering if undertaken without a foundational understanding of the self's nature. Dogen's teachings help in recognizing the sources of suffering, attachment, ignorance, and the illusion of a separate self. This understanding is vital to reduce unnecessary suffering, thus creating a more conducive mental and emotional space for engaging in Nietzsche's demanding process of self-overcoming and creative expression. Mindfulness, a key aspect of Dogen's teachings, is a practice of being fully present and aware without judgment. This practice is crucial in a Nietzschean approach that demands a high degree of self-awareness and the ability to question and overcome one's existing values and beliefs. Mindfulness cultivates the mental clarity and focus needed for such introspective and transformative work. Nietzsche's concept of the self as a work of art requires an embrace of change and impermanence. Dogen's teachings on the impermanent nature of the self and all phenomena provide a philosophical and practical grounding for this. Understanding impermanence as taught by Dogen allows individuals to engage more freely in Nietzsche's creative self-fashioning, unburdened by the desire for permanence and certainty. One of the risks in Nietzsche's philosophy is the descent into nihilism, or the belief in the meaninglessness of life. Dogen's emphasis on the emptiness of the self and the interconnectedness of all beings offers a safeguard against this. By realizing the emptiness of the self, individuals are less likely to fall into nihilistic despair and more likely to see Nietzsche's call for self-overcoming as an opportunity for meaningful engagement with the world. The practice of zazen, a form of seated meditation central to Dogen's Zen Buddhism, can be a powerful tool in actualizing Nietzsche's philosophy. Meditation cultivates a heightened awareness and presence that is foremost for the introspection and self-examination required in Nietzschean self-overcoming. It sharpens the mind, allowing for a clearer and more profound engagement with Nietzsche's demanding philosophical concepts. In synthesizing the teachings of Dogen and Nietzsche, 
we discover a comprehensive approach to self-realization, one that includes both Wilbur's concepts of waking up and growing up. Dogen's understanding of the self's emptiness, or waking up, provides the foundation for engaging in Nietzsche's vigorous process of self-overcoming, or growing up. These two philosophies, when combined, can provide a blueprint for a life that is both deeply contemplative and vibrantly creative. A life rooted in a profound understanding of the self's true nature, or being, while actively engaged in the ceaseless process of becoming, an awakened Nietzsche. Oh.